but because we're doing no-till, you know, I think at the scale we're moving to, 12 acres, I think most farms would probably need, you know, two tractors. But I think we can get away with one tractor because, you know, you, you do so much less tractor work when you're doing no-till. So about 12 acres of no-till and raised beds, what kind of tractor would you recommend? Um, well, we don't do all of our, you know, right now we're doing about half of our production no-till, but um, yeah. Uh, I guess what tractor would you want? Yeah. Uh, ideally for this operation? For this operation, I mean, the tractor that we have, I think is pretty ideal. It's like a 66 horsepower, okay. um, John Deere 40, what is it? 4720, yeah, uh, 55 horsepower would be good to that scale. So when you're starting a field, so you start with the? The disc hero, yep. And I try to do um, at least four tillage operations in May um, to get rid of any perennial weeds and all the annual weeds are in the field. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of do a whole fallow where you're just tilling and tilling and yep. tilling. Getting your weeds under control. Under control, yep. And I like to start farming a field a whole year ahead of time. So if I can stay sure. a year ahead of when I'm actually producing vegetables, yeah. it makes things just a hundred times easier. That's ideal. So, um, yeah, whenever I haven't done that, I've just run into problems and it ends up taking a lot more time than it would have if you can start a year ahead of time. So it starts with uh, multiple tillage operations in May to kind of get rid of those weeds and then planting a cover crop of Sudex and cow peas are very vigorous and they emit um, a lot of pathic chemicals which prevent um, weeds from growing and they shade out weeds as well. So that's done with either, we actually traded a neighbor who has a no-till seed drill and he planted that for us, but um, I've done it with a cone spreader too. And then um, if you're not going on to raised beds, like I just have this set up with the disc running parallel right now because I was doing some seeding and um, and flat ground areas. Put the seed out and then I'll take the disc hero back over with the disc running parallel. So you'll do this before you shape the beds? Yeah, yeah. Um, or you could do the raised beds if you have enough time. I mean, you can do it before or after. Yeah. But if you don't have time to make the raised beds, you know, you can plant the cover crop on flat ground. Um, and then, yeah, run over it with these discs running parallel and then you can just stop with that, but if you have a cultipacker, it's nice to bring a cultipacker back over it and push the seeds in and get better seed to soil contact. So um, run this and then run the cultipacker after it. Um, but eventually, you know, that cover crop's gonna get mowed with a flail mower and tilled back in with the disc harrow. Um, so it doesn't really make sense bedding up if that's the case. Sure. Because you're just gonna be doing a tillage operation for that. But you've really set back a lot of perennial weed problems. Exactly, get all your weeds under control with those yeah. cover, with that cover cropping. And then disc, and then um, disc that in, and then bed shape with this bed shaper. So these discs are usually dropped down a little bit further. Um, we have it set up right now for um, just uh, incorporating cover crop seeds. I didn't want those discs in the ground. So once your bed is shaped, then we'll cover crop it with a winter cover crop. Then I'll do cereal rye and crimson clover. Um, use this to put the cereal rye out, or you can use a bag seeder to put the cereal rye out. And then I put the clover out with the bag seeder because the seed's much smaller. And then, um, so you make the raised beds, put the cover crop seed out, and then I'll go back over with the bed shaper, put these things pulled up, and that will basically push the seeds and help incorporate the seeds into the raised bed. Okay. So it's just the same equipment that you're making the raised beds helps cover those seeds. So you don't need a seed drill, you just press them in basically? Just press them in. You know, and you don't want to go back over it with your disc after you've made your beds. Uh, yeah, exactly, because yeah. it would ruin it. I've also done it with just a rototiller on top of the beds, mm -hmm. real shallow. That works. I've also done it with a drag chain, put the seeds over the raised bed, put, drag a drag chain over the top of it, but that kind of collapses the raised beds, but it still works. Um, so there's multiple ways you could do it. Um, you could even do it with a rake, but just depending on what your, what scale you're at. Yeah. And then from there, um, after that cover crop is matured, you go over it with the uh, roller crimper. So then you right? can do the roller crimper, um, or you can mow the cover crop down and till it in. Sometimes before I plant the cover crop, 
so I can make the raised beds. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll stale seed bed before, before after I, you make the bed before the cover crop. Before the cover crop goes in, I'll use this cultivation toolbar, or you can use a rototiller on top of the raised beds to do a stale seed bed operation. So make the raised beds, let a rain come, the weeds come up, and uh, what you can do is then cultivate those weeds real shallowly. Um, and to do that, I'll use S times. So I'll put a bunch of these on here. And these will get the weeds, these sweeps right here will get the weeds in the furrows between the raised beds. These are side wings, which rebuild those furrows so you don't collapse your raised beds. And then these are um, side knives, so those get the sides of the raised beds. And then these S times will get the top. So basically the entire surface and the furrows are cultivated. So that will help with weed control. And then you can go back and plant your cover crop after that stale seed bedding operation. And if you can stale seed bed, um, like three days, let a rain come, and maybe three days after rain, stale seed bed with this cultivation equipment real shallow, and then plant your seeds into the moisture that's underneath that cultivation. Um, your seeds will be in the moist soil, so they'll come up, but it'll be dry and dusty on top from where you just cultivated, so none of the weeds will germinate, but your weeds will come up, and then you get a really weed-free cover crop, which is ideal for no-tilling. Yeah. You really spent some time dialing this on. Yeah, and you could also stale seed bed with a flame weeder like that as well. Yeah. So there's different ways you could do that stale seed bed. And you could stale seed bed with a tilter too. You've got a tilter, right? Do you yeah. ever do that? Yeah. I haven't tried Yeah, that I before. haven't used that with a tilter. Can you talk about that? I mean, I have a tilter, but I haven't used it for stale seed bedding specifically. Uh, you would essentially just replace this step in the process. So um, I'll, I'll take a bed. Of course, we use a lot of compost. Um, so we'll, we'll use. Um, We'll take a bed that's been in production, um, whether it's coming out of a cover crop or a cash crop, and we will basically insert um, where Sean is using this. We would just insert the tilter there. So right before we're going to seed a crop, um, we'll leave it open or fallow for the moisture to germinate the weeds. And when I start to uh, uh, get ready to seed a crop or plant a crop, I'll go over it with the tilter. And with the tilter, I like that you can adjust the depth simply by how you're holding the handles from the fin on the back of the, of the housing. Um, so I will run it where it's just catching the ground, where it's just making tread, tilted down so that I'm just skimming the surface of that. And then I, I use a jang for seeding. I can go through and seed with a jang and that's getting deeper than the surface of that uh, uh, mulch layer of compost. We use composted leaves as mulch and the top of that surface will dry out, but I can adjust the shoe on the jang to get a little deeper uh, to make those seeds on that bed. And then uh, the roller crimper. Oh yeah, let's look at that. So once we get a cover crop established and we're ready to terminate it, uh, you said you can mow it and till it, um, you know, which, which a lot of people do, but then roller crimping um, was the next. Yeah, let me show you the roller crimper. It's out here. So this is uh, the roller crimper. I think this was designed at Rodale Institute, um, and it comes with a chevron pattern, which kind of distributes the weight back and forth as it's rolling across the ground. But, so you grow your cover crop to the right maturity stage, and then roll this over it, and it basically lays it down flat, and then these dull blades crimp the stems, and that crimping action causes the cover crop to die. So you get this thick mulch um, out in the field, so you're growing your mulch in place and then you can put your transplants through that mulch. So to get the weight on this, you're filling this up with water, is that yeah, right? You've got this so you have a drain port plug right there. there, drain plug, open that up. It's important to um, lubricate that, otherwise it's really hard to get that, that out, I've realized. But yep, yeah, I fill it up and then drain it in the winter time because you don't want the water expanding and breaking it. Um, and when you're going over a cover crop, you're using this on raised beds. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you have, um, how you use this in conjunction with raised beds because you're broadcasting your cover crop seed. Mm -hmm. So you've got cover crop seeds in the aisles, but then you're using this on a bed top. How do you take care of the cover crops in the aisles? Um, or, or do you have any issues with uh, maybe cover crops re-sprouting on the shoulders? Yeah, there is some issues where sometimes I'll get a, a, a 
a little bit of the cover crop sprouting on that shoulder area. Um, I usually run through twice and the tires, you know, our cover crops, our raised beds are pretty precise. So the tires basically fit perfectly in those furrows between the raised beds. And I think the tires do a lot of crimping action. Like I mm -hmm. talked to um, Jeff Moyer who invented this and he was saying he first discovered that you could kill ryegrass by basically as he was e exiting a field, the rye on the edges that he wasn't uh, mowing or tilling would lay down and the tires would actually lay it down flat and the tires were killing it. So the tires do some crimping action themselves okay. with the treads in them. So just having the tires roll over those furrows I think does a, a lot. Um, another thing I've noticed is with this bed shaper, uh, it's different than the last bed shaper that I had, but this bed shaper has sweeps in the side wings. So when I re-bed it to incorporate the cover crop seeds, mm -hmm. a lot of the cover crop seeds in the furrows get pushed out. So I don't actually have a lot of, lot of cover crop growth in the furrows with this bed shaper. The last bed shaper I was using did not have that action, and I would get good cover crop growth in the furrows still. Sure. This one I don't get good cover crop growth in the furrows, but it doesn't seem to be an issue because when you crimp it, all the cover crops, a lot of the residue kind of like finds its way to the lowest point, which is in that furrow. So you yeah. get a lot, you get more mulch than you need in the furrow. Yeah. The part where you usually have a little bit of weakening in the mulch system is right there kind of on that um, edge before it drops off on the edge of the furrow, yeah. right there on that shoulder um, as it drops down. That's where you, your your mulch is the weakest. So doing that stale seed bed operation or making sure that you do a lot of weed control before you plant that winter cover crop by either stale seed bedding or growing that Sudex cowpea cover crop ahead of time um, is really helpful. And then we just never let any weeds go to seed in our field. So once we lim eliminate our, our weeds, that first year with that intensive cover cropping with the Sudex and the Calpees, try not to ever let anything go to seed and then you basically will get to a point where you don't have a lot of weeds growing through. Yeah. So if you're doing cover cropping on such a large scale as this, um, definitely this is this is a central piece of equipment on your farm. Uh, and it seems like you've sized your bed top and your tire spacing and your bed shaper, everything has sort of been dialed in to take care of all of those cover crops mm -hmm. appropriately. Yeah, we actually just changed everything up. Um, when I bought this tractor, the tires were spaced a little bit, the rear tires are spaced with a with the spacer a little bit further than they would have been on the, on the stock tractor. Um, it was a used one and they had modified that. So normally the rear tires determine the bed width, but on this tractor, the front tires determine the bed width. So then I, um, last winter I bought spacers for the front tires and so now our front tires are as wide as our rear tires which allowed us to basically go from a three foot bed top to a four foot bed top so just this fall we basically are converting our whole system from a three foot bed top to a four foot bed top which reduces our pathways per field so i think i calculated we're getting like 20 percent more growing space growing space per yeah. acre so it's just an yeah. easy way to kind of but now I have to like readjust all of our equipment. <laughs> sure. So yeah, but uh, I, I think when you when you really consider breaking no-till outside of your small market garden setup, you know, mm -hmm. being able to dial in these larger pieces of equipment um, and still remain functional uh, in an organic system, uh, I like I like that you've really thought all of that through. Um, and it, and it also allows you a lot more leeway to do a lot of the more space-heavy crops like. I know you do a lot of watermelon and cantaloupe yeah. and, and winter squash, things that on minor Josh's scale are probably not as feasible or reasonable mm -hmm. um, when, you, when you're given dollar per square foot time. Yeah. You know? um, so I like that you're able to incorporate a lot of those crops and still use a lot of cover crops and do a no-till system at scale. Um, yeah, it's really helped us out because a lot of the far other farmers at our market, like no one's growing watermelons, right. not a lot of people are growing winter squash, like no one grows those, you know, corn, all that thing that takes a lot of space. So yeah. we've got the space, but it's just a matter of, you know, being able to work it and we can work it really easily with the no-till. I think at a small scale, you know, with the, with the walk-behind tractor, when we had the roller crimper on that, um, you know, because it takes so many less passes, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't have to mow, you don't have to till. Um, it saves so much time. I think it would allow smaller growers to like get into some of those other crops. You know, if Can we take a space, look at that? If you, if I you don't have, have it. That was at the okay. last farm that I was at. So unfortunately okay. I don't have that one here. But um, it is, it is made by earth tools. Yeah. Made by earth tools. Um, you don't put water in it to weigh it down. You have to get 
And I think a lot of people make the mistake of not getting enough of the dumbbell weights mm. to weight it down. So I've heard people say, oh, it doesn't work. Well, you have to get, like, yeah. I think I spent $200 or something on dumbbell weights to get enough weight on that sucker to get it heavy enough to do the crimping, so that's key. So so what were some of your takeaways using, you said you had it on the back of a gorilla or on the front? Yeah, of you a put gorilla. it on the front. Um, weedy areas, like around the edge of your, of your no-till plot, because yeah. the weeds are going to encroach in that. So the smaller scale you are, you know, do you have the ability to sacrifice, you know, five feet around your entire field? That yeah. ends up being a lot of money if you only have like an acre, you know? Yeah. So I think you can still make it possible, but you have to just be very careful when you plant your cover crop to make sure it's thick enough. Like All even at right. this scale, I usually go around the edge of the field and do like an extra pass with the bag seeder just to make sure that I'm getting really good cover crop yeah, um, seeding tip. rate on the edge of the field. Where yep. all the weeds usually come in, so plant an extra, you know, dense border around your cover crop, and that will make that area useful. And then even going out there and weeding things, if you see it on the edge, you know, yep. coming in. Yep.